next week, all right? I'm going to be sensitive to this service and to, amen, the preach word, amen? And I, I do the thing and praise the Lord as a God, as God adds to, to our family such as should be saved, amen? Again, we, this is a church where everybody's somebody, all right? And we do have to give preeminence to the word right now. And I, I, I don't want to catch your minds while the time is right, all right? Amen. Let's all stand to our feet as we go and look into the Holy Scriptures for this time. I'm asking you to return to um, three sets of scriptures here. Actually, Exodus chapter 16. Let's everyone to stand. Please look on next to somebody who has a Bible. If you don't happen to have one, that's fine. And they'll be kind of share their word with you. Exodus chapter 16, verse number 13. Exodus 16 and 13. Also, Numbers chapter 11. Numbers 11 and 31. Thank you, Jesus. Numbers 11, chapter, verse 31. And also, St. John, chapter 6, verse 51. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everyone stand. If you have two good legs, you can stand on. Everyone stand. We give reverence to God. The reason we do that is because God is worthy and give Him honor. Amen? Amen. Exodus 16, chapter, verse 13. You can follow along silently. It came to pass that at the even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay round about the host. Numbers 11, verse 31. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were, 
a day's journey on this side. And as it were, a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were, two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up, that, stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails, and he that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. Verse 33 says, And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled upon the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And our final reading, St. John chapter 6. St. John chapter 6, verse number 51. The Lord Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Thank you, Jesus. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Verse 54 says, Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And as the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Verse 58 says, This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse number 63, our final verse. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let's look unto the Lord this afternoon. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this opportunity to be able to enter to this house once again. We thank you for your blood you shed on Calvary, God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost power. We ask you that you would lead us in this message and become for no other reason but to glorify and magnify your name, God. Let this word reach us. Let this word penetrate our minds. We might be able to move by your grace. We pray for not only for those that are in this congregation, but we pray also for those that are listening by the way of the internet. I pray in Jesus' name that your word will do a mighty work in them. We pray that someone will come to the knowledge of knowing who you are today. Somebody will go down in water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the biblical evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. I pray also for those, God, that have been discouraged. And somebody today, Lord, that is in a backslidden condition today. They've only seen what the enemy has done, and they today, Lord, are, are in a state of bitterness, God. Heal them through this message right now. And give them another chance to recover themselves out of the snare of the enemy. I pray right now that your word would work in their hearts. That your will, God, that none would perish, but that all would come to a place of repentance. Have your way in this message, and we'll give you name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'd like for you to keep your Bibles open as we look at these two areas of Scripture here. Uh, even though we read in Exodus chapter 16, verse number 13, it ties in with Numbers, amen, uh, chapter 11, verses 31 through 33. Amen. I'd like for you, as you, as you uh, look at St. John writing here, Jesus speaks about him being the true bread which came down from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. He goes on and lets us know here, uh, thank you, Jesus. 
I am, verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I'd like to talk to your hearts for a few minutes on the topic. Amen. Keep. Somebody say with me. Keep. Keep. Out of. Out of. Hell's. Hell's. Kitchen. Kitchen. Keep out. Keep out. Of hell's. Hell's. Kitchen. Kitchen. For a subtopic this afternoon, Jesus. Say with me. Jesus. Jesus. Always. Always. Satisfied. Satisfied. We had an opportunity to go to New York. Uh, last year, it was the year before, and there's a section of, of uh, New York there. It is, you know, every, every little division's got its own type of uh, uh, general about itself. And this, this area that we stayed in the hotel is called Hell's Kitchen. And some of you that maybe perhaps watch the cooking channels and what have you, uh, there are different shows of those that are culinary artists and they even have so much, uh, you know, minutes to be able to prepare the best looking best tasting type of dish. Amen? And it gets pretty interesting here because one chef goes up against another chef and they try to be able to make uh, very good dishes and it can't just look good. It's got to taste good. Amen? Amen? And I thought about today as we look back at the children of Israel and I thought about here how the Lord heard their cry. They, they were down in Egypt land, which is a type of sin. They were slaves. They were told how hard to work. You know, brothers, we were out there working, carrying bricks and bags of cement and what have you. You can picture yourself here. You're told when to go down, when to, let, when to get up, what to eat. And they had to work so hard, they had no freedom. I thought that's exactly what sin does to individuals. The devil, as my wife said today, is two things that's real. We know God is real. And who else is real? Come on, talk to me. The devil is real. Amen? And so the devil, his goal here is to make individuals work so hard... Uh, one thing that has not changed, praise the Lord, the wage of sin here, the payback for sin is still death. Amen. The wages of sin is death. There's a payback. Amen. For people who want to live for themselves. There's a payback. You might say, well, you know, what's wrong with really wanting to do it my way? But I want to encourage you today as we look at this message, I want you to understand here that uh, God is a God, number one, of provision. Somebody say provision. provision. Uh, he provided, number one, the way for them to be able to get out of Egypt. And I don't know what your Egypt represents, you know. Uh, we've got some individuals in here that used to be on drugs. I said used to be on drugs. Amen. Amen. Used to deal, used to drink. And some people say, well, I never did drugs. But you did drink, didn't you? Amen. Amen. You used to like to get your, somebody said, you used to like to get my drink on. Amen. We would brag. Amen. People that used to drink, brag how much they could drink. I could drink somebody under the table. I don't know what that means, but uh, <laughs> under the table, above the table, you're going to feel it after that shot. That shot gets down in your system. Amen. Uh, but out there in sin, we were moved by the prince and power of the air, which is the devil. And there was a payday. We had to pay some hard prices for doing it our way. And I thought about how tricky the devil is. The devil always wants to bring things down to our base desire. Understand here, our human nature, we call it our flesh, there is no good thing in our flesh. We like to pamper it, we like to put nice clothes on it, we like to clean it up, throw some perfume on it, some cologne on it. We look in the mirror and say, yeah, I'm looking good today. World, here I come. Amen? And I have no problem with having a nice, healthy self-esteem. Amen? Nothing wrong with that absolutely at all. But when we look at our nature, our carnal nature, when I say carnal, I'm talking about our worldly nature, the old man. The old man, we must understand, is not our friend. Uh, our own human uh, ways of doing things will not take us into heaven. Back in the Bible, they said, you know what? We're going to build a tower up into heaven. And the Lord looked at them and said, yeah, you, you people think you're really doing something great. And they made a great attempt. Amen. And the Word said it in this way. It said, you know what? They got their minds together. 
And it appears here when people put their minds together, they can almost do about anything. Thank you, Jesus. But as they were building up so high, uh, the Lord, Bible says, came down and confused their languages. And if you needed to carry one brick or boulder over here, when God came down and played with their language, they, they didn't know, amen, what, was, what they were talking about. Amen. The person that was speaking Greek didn't know how to speak to the other person and what have you. And some of you may maybe know how to speak other languages in here. You know, might be multilingual, and that's good. But this is where we find the first division of languages and cultures here. God said uh, that you won't be able to do this, so he allowed there to be a division of languages and cultures. Uh, but what, what I want you to understand here, when you attempt to do things by your own cognitive ability, thinking that you can justify yourself in the kingdom, that's when you get off track. So this old man, this, this flesh here, uh, makes us think about only the things we see with our natural eye. Uh, we'd be lying to you as preachers and as church people if we told you the world doesn't have some pleasures. Amen? The world has some pleasures. Amen? There are sexual pleasures that are out there. Amen? There are thrills and spills. One of the things that is a multi-billion dollar industry is the pornography industry. Amen? Amen. The allurement. Amen. This is why you see these commercials late at night and they get these people that are paid actresses. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to call me tonight? Amen. Are you lonely tonight? You ain't got to be lonely. Just, just reach up that, reach out to me. First call is even free. Amen. I'll talk with you all night long. And so the devil says, you know what? She looks pretty good. And I'm sitting here in this apartment. I'm sitting here in this house all by myself. And we think, you know, well, if I get up and call that person, I'm going to get that person I see on the TV. But let me tell you something. When you make that call, you don't know who you're talking to on the other end. Right. Amen. You think you're talking to somebody the opposite sex. Amen. That might just be a man with a high voice. Amen. Praise the Lord. But most of the times you see ladies on TVs and things like that because the woman's body has always been an instrument, amen, of appeal. Amen. Ladies, their bodies have always been used as sex objects. One of the big things today in the world is about the trafficking, amen, of the sex trade. And we need to be aware of our children because there are predators that are out there to take advantage of people. You all remember the story, the man, I think it was in Cleveland, uh, he had these ladies, well, wasn't it three ladies, uh, held in this, in this house for 10 years. He had them as prisoners, amen, in this house. So one time, this man that was going to work, I think at a fast food restaurant, the man, the woman was able to creep her head out of the basement window and able to get the man's attention, said, I'm so-and-so, he been looking for, I'm a, I think her name was Amanda, wasn't it? Amen. And so here after 10 years, praise God, there was a good Samaritan that was in the right place at the right time to allow those ladies to no, no longer be slaves in that house in Cleveland. Let me tell you something. This is exactly what the people of God, they were slaves in Egypt. And, and they say, we're crying out, we're tired of doing it, amen, according to Pharaoh. And they wanted deliverance. So the Lord said, I'll do it like this. I, I heard your cry. I'm going to send down a deliverer, his name's going to be Moses, and I'm going to tell him to tell Pharaoh, let you go. Amen? Moses said, well, you know, who shall I say send me? He said, well, tell him like this, tell him I am that I am. Moses goes down, you all know the story, and God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, not so, these people, amen, are my people. And isn't it funny how the devil, amen, he owns you out there. You know, we, we came through 50 years here. We were celebrating 50 years with the I Have a Dream speech by Dr. Martin Luther King. Amen. Thank God for dreamers today. Amen. Dream to be free. No longer be told we are second-class citizens. Amen, somebody. Amen. The children of Israel, let's give God some praise. Amen. No longer have to be told, amen, we can't eat at this restaurant and ride on this bus here. The children of Israel, they were slaves in this territory. But here we find here that God was thinking about them, number one. Number two, God heard their cry. God sent down Moses to deliver them. 
And here they're brought forth out of the land of Egypt, which is a, which is a type of sin, and they are brought into the wilderness. Ah, the wilderness, understand this, you may be going through some things, but your wilderness is not your stopping point. Say it with me, my wilderness is not my stopping point. Is this a point of transition, amen? It was in the wilderness that God wanted to establish His people's faith. Well, Lord, how can I believe in you and I can't see how you're going to bless me? How in the world can I uh, uh, get a grasp here of who you are when, uh, when all I can see here is nothing but desert? Amen. But God here, I'm saying, if you just trust me and serve me, I'm going to take you through the desert. Amen. I'm going to take you through Jericho. And I've got, a, I've got some land. I've got some territory. I've got some place, a place for you that is designed just for you. Yeah. I, I want you to understand here today that you've got to have a hope in the gospel today. Yeah. Don't you ever think that God has gone on vacation? Don't you ever think that God doesn't care about your world? Don't ever get in your mind that God is too busy to care about you. Amen. People may kick you to the curb, but God will never kick you to the curb. Amen. We find here that he met their needs. Say with me, God meets my needs. We find here as we look here at the manna, praise the Lord. They went out and said, well, you know what, Moses? Ain't nobody barbecuing out here in the desert. Those ain't no fast food places here. There's no Mickey D's, amen. There's no McDonald's, no Burger Kings, amen. Some of us like White Castles, amen. Well, praise the Lord for you, amen. There were no White Castles in the wilderness, hallelujah. And then we find here, they said, Moses, we ain't got nothing to eat. So the Lord said, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to give you some food here. I'm going to give you some manna from above. And this manna, the Lord said, I'm going to drop it right out of heaven. Amen. Right in the midst, amen, for you to be able to gather up. Amen. This manna was a food. It was a food miraculously supplied by God. Amen. Let me, let me tell you something. God still works miracles. It was provided to them during the time that they wandered in the wilderness. This manna, the Lord told him, he said, I'm going to rain bread from heaven on you. If you look at Exodus chapter number 16, you're going to refer back to that. He said, this is going to be a type of food that I'm going to give just for you because, again, there's nothing out there for you to kill. Amen? I'm going to give you food straight out of heaven. And the spiritual food, we look at this here, the, the spiritual purpose of the daily provision is that they, might, that they might be humbled in the sight of the Lord. Let me tell you something. When you know, amen, that uh, your help, all of your help really comes from the Lord, and you'll no longer put all your faith and all your trust and all your confidence in tangible things. Amen. President Barack Obama could only do so much for us. Amen. Amen. The state of Indiana could only do so much for us. Come on, somebody. Amen. Wayne Township could only do so much for us. But God's got to be bigger than Wayne Township. Amen. God's got to be bigger than Allen County. Thank you, Jesus. God's got to be bigger than the state of Indiana. So what the Lord is saying here, I want you to walk not in a state of pride and arrogance, but here when you know that you've got to lean and depend upon me, amen, you've got to walk humbly before the Lord. Amen. How many are asking, Lord, Lord, help me to walk humbly before you? Amen? amen. Now, you don't have to pray, Lord, make me humble. No, don't pray that. Because what you're saying, Lord, I want you just to smack me down. No, no, no. You need to humble yourself and say, Lord, I, I thank you that you bless me with a job to be able to go to. And how did I got a little change in my pocket? Let me, let, me, let me pay my tithes. Let me pay my offering because that belongs to you. And let me trust you to help, help me pay my bills. Amen? Amen. So he was saying here, back here in the book of Exodus, this man, I'm going to rain it down out of heaven. And the manna here, as we look at this here, was enough for everybody in the land. This manna here, amen, they were able to gather this manna. And they, went, they couldn't take too much because if they gathered it in excess, Amen. What would happen here? The sun would come out and the sun would melt the manna. Thank you, Jesus. So they would only gather enough for a day's meal. Thank you, Jesus. This miracle food, uh, the Bible describes it being like the dew. You know what dew is. Uh, when you get up in the morning and you got that little white film on your car, amen, that's the dew. It hasn't necessarily rained, but it was a dew that's on your car. There's a witness that's there. Amen. 
That's how the Lord watered the earth before the flood. There was a dew that rested on the plant. So this, this manna fell on the ground like dew. There was a residue there. Thank you, Jesus. Described as somewhat what we call the hoar frost on the ground in Exodus chapter 16, verse number 14. This manna, it was a, it was, although it was sticky when it appeared, the manna soon was solidified so that it could be ground and baked into wafers or cakes. And it tasted like wafers made with honey. Exodus chapter 31. So there was a similar taste to it. It was sweet, amen, somewhat of a wafer type of material. And God supplied this for them. We find here that during the 40 years, that's a long time, amen? Amen. Is there anybody under 40 in here? Raise your hand. Anybody under 40? Amen. In your lifetime. Look at this here. Amen. God supplied all the years you're living. Amen. And then some yet to come. God supplied the children of Israel manna from above. God was saying here, I'm going to be their resource. But we find here, even though God was giving them manna from above, thank you, Jesus, they said, you know what? We're tired of this angel food. Amen. We, you know, even though we're appreciative, we got some food in our belly. All we got to eat is this manna. Amen. Amen. How many grew up eating hot dogs your whole young life? Eating beans your whole life. And you, when you got older, you said, you know what? When I get grown, I ain't going to touch another pork and bean all my life. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. Don't. There's an old saying, never say what? Never. Never say never. Because we're living in hard times. Amen? Those pork and beans that you grew up on. Amen. You might have to go back to all this, and that's all that you got to get to eat is some pork and beans. You may not have any pork in those beans. You might just have beans and beans. Amen? Praise the Lord. So never, come on, let me tell them never. Never. Never say never. Amen? But when they look at this man and they said, you know what, God, I know it's coming from you. Amen. I know we, we don't have the ability to do anything about it. But we're tired of this manna. And manna here really it compares it to the spiritual food, the word of God. Amen. Manna is the word, the spiritual food that God gives us. And so they said, you know what, we want some meat. How many love meat in here? Now, I know when I go to Pizza Hut, I only order one thing. Guess what I order? Oh, y'all know me well. I don't want no onions. I don't want no bell peppers. You just put some meat on it. You can add some more cheese, but add, definitely give me some meat. Amen? Give me some ham. Amen? Give me some sweet Italian sausage. Amen? Come on, somebody. Most men love meat. Ladies, you all eat salads, right? And I like salads, too. Salads, salads are good. I'm trying to be more health conscious, but you know what? If I got to eat salad, guess what I got to have on? I got to have some meat on that salad. Amen? And then to top it off just right, I know when I drive through Wendy's, I get that, uh, that garden blend. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a seasonal, like berries. Yeah, I like the blueberries and, and the strawberries. And, and, I, and I say, put the chicken on it, and you open up the pack, and you put some almonds on it. Amen? And, and then they fix it just right because they put some chicken on it. Amen? Amen. And the chicken ain't cold. I don't want no cold meat on my salad. The salad's cold. I don't want the meat being cold. Amen. And I said, and I said give me some extra that raspberry vinaigrette dressing, that sweet dressing. So time I fix it all up. It's got to be soupy. It's got to be, it's got to be good. Amen. When it, when it goes down, it, it, I want it to slide down. Amen. I, I don't want the white pieces of the lettuce. You know, the white part, that's the, that's the, that's the twangy part. It's sort of bitter. You know, you don't want the white part of lettuce, that stem, that stalk part. But I got to have some meat on it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so how many know today, in order for us to survive, we need some meat? Come on now. We need some meat. Amen. Amen. We get, we get, tomorrow is Labor Day. Amen. And, and the grills are on sale now. And you know what? After Labor Day, some of us still going to be flipping. Amen. We still going to be turning because we love us some what? Come on. We love us some meat. So here we find here, the children of Israel, they say, well, we love us some meat. So God said, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to give you so much quail. Y'all know what quail, a little bird that flies around, right? I don't know quail is it more like a chicken, more like a goose, but all I know is quail is something you can eat, right? So God said, I'm going to fix you all up. You're going to eat manna in the morning, and you're going to eat quail at night. And God said, since you cried out to me, I'm going to give you exactly what you want. 
I'm going to give you a manna because you want some quail. I'm going to put so much quail all around for a three foot height of quail. Three feet high of quail. A whole wall of quail. Amen. They had quail coming out of their ears. There was so much quail. And let me tell you something about here. I want to compare the quail here to the flesh or to the works of the old man. The old man, tell you, tell yourself, my old man is never satisfied. The old man, the old man, the old nature. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, if you're not careful, the Bible says he didn't find the wife. Come on, somebody. Find a good thing. Amen. But the Lord bless you with a wife. The Lord bless you with a husband because you were in what? And you were in need, right? You were looking. And you were looking because you were what? In need, all right? Amen. I need. Let me say, Lord, I need me a husband. I don't want a husband. I need me a husband. Come on, y'all about to talk to me. I need me a husband. I need me a woman. And hopefully you prayed the right prayer because when you prayed, hopefully you said, Lord, I need a godly man. I need a godly woman. In other words, Lord, don't bring me nothing jacked up. Amen. I, I don't mean to fit anybody, but you know, some people, that, that's my terminology. I don't mean to fit anybody, but some people sort of jacked up. They, they sort of crooked. You, they crooked when they come to you. They got too many issues, right? Amen. Amen. You can have a five minute conversation with somebody, no, you ain't the one for me. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you something. This flesh is never satisfied. Amen. So just like the Lord meets the natural man's desires, God knows we have a sex drive. God knows we have an appetite drive. Amen. But what he's saying, those drives have got to be channeled the right way. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus went on to say here, I, I, I'll provide for your flesh. When I got married to First Lady Sanchez here, and uh, come a uh, couple years, we'll have, what, 30 years of marriage. We got married in 85. Uh, I didn't get married to play ping pong with her. Amen? Come on, somebody. I got married because I was a virgin. She was a virgin. And look at this. It's time for us to get together. Hallelujah. Y'all know the rest of the story. There's little Juan. There's Sister Julia. So look at this. The Lord had to somehow teach us kids who didn't know what to do, what to do, what we needed to do, what we needed to do. Amen? What I'm telling you today here, God will supply all of your needs. God knows how much you can take. Amen? Amen. And when you're at your very last prayer's limit, God said, don't forfeit me, but hold on to me. These individuals here, as we look back here at the setting here, they, they, they got something, amen, that they wanted, but they really lost out on the close relationship with God. I thought about here how sad it is for individuals. You know, some individuals start out in the church. And you know what? When they didn't have anything, they were praying, Lord, bless me with a job. Come on, somebody. Amen. Lord, bless me. Amen. With a job. Bless me with a better job. But no sooner than they got that, they forgot the Lord. Amen. See, when you ain't got nothing, excuse the word ain't, it's easy to get down to the altar and say, Lord, come by right now. I need a job. Amen. Come on, young people. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some young wanted some summer, summer jobs. Pray for me. I need some money in school. Amen. God will supply your needs here. But what you must understand here, that even though there's a need out there, make sure you don't get your priorities mixed up here, because the devil himself has got a kitchen that he's conjured up some things. Amen? In hell's kitchen. Let's look at this for a few minutes here. We're going to let you go home here. In hell's kitchen here, the devil is conjuring up some things because he knows what you like. Amen. Nothing that's in, everything that's in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Praise the Lord. So you have to be careful because in hell's kitchen, amen, it's all about what it looks like. Thank you, Jesus. You know, some people are getting surprised today because, amen, when they're going into relationships, from the outside, it looks like you're getting one thing. Come on, somebody. Amen. When they get to know that person a little bit closer, find out you ain't what you look like on the outside. Amen. Amen. How many know today we're living in a very mixed up world? Living in a mixed up world today where there's so many wrong messages. Pastor, can you say wrong messages? That's not politically correct. Yes, it is. Wrong messages. Amen. When God made me a man, praise the Lord. I'm step on somebody's toes today. I don't care. Amen. Amen. I never had a desire to grow any of these. Amen. Praise the Lord. Breasts belong on my wife and on ladies. Come on, somebody. Amen. I never had a desire to be a woman. Thank you, Jesus. 
And I say this because we're living in mixed up times today when it is the devil's job to bring confusion in the land. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This homosexual movement, this driving. The flesh is never, say with me, the flesh is never satisfied. So now we have people today, it's not good enough. Amen. To have what somebody is of the opposite sex. Amen. Now we got men, as I told you all this, amen, I think it was last Sunday. Amen. People want to experiment now. Amen. If I'm married to a man, I'm going to be, uh, that's just a covering because on the down low, amen, I'm really going both ways. Amen. Let me tell you something. The door don't swing both ways. Amen. amen. Y'all need to talk to me today. Amen. 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 I said the door don't swing both ways. Amen. amen. If you're a man, you need to be loving a woman. If you're a woman, you need to be loving a man. Hallelujah. God never gave you the option to love both sexes. Amen? Amen. Let me give you some Bible today. Say, come on, say with me, Pastor. Give me some Bible today. Amen. We praise the Lord when God put Adam to sleep. He said, Adam, it ain't good for you to be alone. I'm going to put you to sleep and I'm going to make you what? A man and woman. And she's going to be a help me, right? She's going to help meet you at the door and spend your money, right? Is that what she going to make you a help me. Amen, hey honey, I'll help you spend your money. Here, you need to do this. Amen. Well, we thank God for helping me. Amen? Amen. I'm just a little humor. I got to go home with First Lady after service here. Thank you, Jesus. God said, I'm going to make you a help me. Thank you, Jesus. So when Adam woke up out of that first operation, he woke up and he saw who? He saw Eve. Amen. How many women did he see when he woke up? One. Amen. So when Adam woke up, he saw one woman. Thank you, Jesus. When he woke up, I mean, when Adam woke up out of his operation, he saw one woman. What was her name? Eve. Eve. When Eve came into being, how many men did she see? One. one. Amen. So there were no other options. Look at your neighbor. Tell him there ain't no more options. There ain't no more options. Ain't no more options. Ain't no more options. Ain't no more options. Amen. 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 I'm talking about since you come over here to the same side. Amen. Before you walk down that aisle, you better make sure, amen, that person is godly. Hello, somebody. Because you're supposed to say, amen, till death do us part. Oh, y'all talk to me tonight. Come on now. This afternoon, till death do us part. Some people only want to live, amen, till the death of the marriage. But no, that ain't what it's about. It's till death do us part. Amen. Let's go back to Hell's Kitchen. The Hell's Kitchen and say, you know what? Amen. If so-and-so ain't right, amen, I'll give you somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. I remember coming up as a young boy. Amen. I didn't know anything. I didn't know any, any different out there. I just sang the song down the radio. Amen. It was an old song. It said, me and Mrs. Jones. Y'all was there when I heard that song. <laughs> me and Mrs. Jones, we got a... Oh, my goodness. I didn't even know to sing that song. <laughs> I would just sing and didn't know what I was singing. Somebody had to, somebody had to help me see, you know what you're singing? I don't know, it sounds good to me. I didn't know what no thing was. Thing going on. But now that I got to be grown, I don't sing that song. Now that I'm saved, come on somebody. I don't sing that song, amen? Because ain't no thing going on but first lady thing over there. Come on somebody. Amen. Nothing but the flesh. Nothing but the flesh. The flesh will tell you, go out and get somebody else. The flesh will tell you that boyfriend ain't working out. Go out and get you another boyfriend. Amen. You feeling very energetic? Amen. One boyfriend ain't good enough. Amen. You need to have one on Monday. Amen. Have one on Wednesday. You might as well have one on the weekend. Tell the neighbor that ain't nothing but the flesh. Businessmen need to watch when they go traveling. Amen. Amen. Some of our superstars, some of our movie stars, some of our athletes. Y'all know the story. They were being busted. Amen. Amen. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. Amen. Amen. Flying all this big money. And guess what? Money attracts what? Women. Oh, there you go. Money attracts women, right? Amen. So here they had to the answer. Kobe Bryant, y'all seen the story, had to answer. I, I, I think he's just getting ready to get married, too. That busted for having all kinds of women. Tell, tell, tell your neighbor, that ain't nothing but the flesh. Amen. So I'm telling you today, keep out of Hell's Kitchen. And in Hell's Kitchen, amen. Come on, somebody help me stir the pot today. Come on, grab that hammer and stir the pot today. In Hell's Kitchen, there's a whole lot of things that look good. In Hell's Kitchen, amen, when you ain't got no money, amen. Amen. The 
the devil will say, come on, you go out and make some fast money, right? You ain't got to be poor. Amen. Just carry that bag across town to that house over there. Amen. You can keep part of the money. Amen. In hell's kitchen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It always looks good. Now, y'all talk to me this afternoon. I think I'm preaching to myself. In hell's kitchen. Tell me it always looks good. Amen. In hell's kitchen, it always smells good. In hell's kitchen, the devil always has a pot that he's fixing just for you. Thank you, Jesus. But then I'm in my closing. I'm happy to know today, as we look at the St. John, the sixth, uh, praise God, the sixth chapter, Jesus went on to say it like this. You really need to know here, amen, that the flesh profits nothing. He said, if you reap to the flesh, amen, you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap to the flesh. But I'm so glad to know that God said it's not going to be what you put in your mouth and not what you digest in your stomach. But Jesus went on to say, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Yes, it's important. You've got to have some food, but you've got to have food that came from God. Amen. You might say, well, man, look at, look at all the money the drug dealers are making. Uh, and I know they're rolling in the cash. Amen. Uh, driving Bentleys and driving Mercedes. And I saw I saw Bentley roll through. Amen. On Coliseum. Boy, that thing was nice. Uh, four door. Amen. Having big rims on it. Amen. And probably a good 25 inch rims on it. Amen. And, and, amen. Dark tinted windows. Like, who is that? Who's that in that car? Amen. Must be a movie star. Amen. But you know what? Sin always looks enticing out there. Amen. I don't want anything if it came from the devil. Amen. I don't want the diamonds. I don't want the money. I don't want the big cars. Amen. 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 All that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. But the Lord went on to say here, here's something that you really need. Look at your neighbor and tell them, this is what you really need. Amen. More than another man, more than another woman. You need the bread which came down out of heaven. So Jesus went on to say here, he said, except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And he was talking to the Jews here. Now the Jews, you know, they finicky people anyway. They only had a certain diet. They couldn't just eat anything. They ate stuff that was kosher, right? But Jesus is using some rough language on them. What do you mean eat your flesh and drink your blood? You know, it, it sounds sort of satanic out there. Amen? Amen. Don't fool. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand you. Today. There's some real people today that are devil worshipers, amen. Uh, they drink actually real blood uh, and they eat real flesh, amen. Uh, there are people that actually worship the devil today uh, and they are anti-God, anti-Jesus Christ, and anti-Bible. Uh, but Jesus Christ, as we look at this sixth chapter, and let me say six, amen, God, is, God does everything in order. Uh, six is man's number, isn't that something? Uh, in the sixth chapter here, the Lord was telling man uh, that you may think, amen, that you're getting by, but he went on to say Moses, uh, amen, and the people back in that day, they ate that manna, but they went to sleep, uh, in other words, they died, uh, but Jesus said, I'm the true manna which came down out of heaven, uh, I'm the bread, amen, that you need today, uh, he said, your fathers did eat manna, and they fell asleep, uh, he said on here in verse number 63, it is the spirit that quickens or makes alive, uh, but the flesh profited nothing, uh, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In my closing, I reminded also when I was a young boy, there was a commercial, amen, it was, it was about the candy bar, Snickers, amen. How many old enough to remember the slogan that Snickers had? Amen. Snickers always satisfies, amen. Amen. They were promoted for athletes and what have you. All you need to take a bite off of that Snickers is Snickers, what? Satisfies, amen. Uh, but let me tell you something. Snickers may satisfy for the moment, uh, but I'm gonna tell you something about this. Something satisfies way more than Snickers. Uh, Jesus satisfies. Uh, Jesus always satisfies. Come on, say it with me. Uh, Jesus always satisfies. Uh, so we're closing today. Let's, amen. Keep out of hell's kitchen. Uh, let's understand today that the Lord. Said, uh, your flesh is in odds with me, uh, but you got to be able to understand, number one, why you were created. Uh, you were created because God said, I made you in my image and in my likeness, uh, that you might know who you really are. Uh, 
You're not that pimp out there walking the streets, amen? Uh, amen, I want to declare to some so-called players out there. Uh, God made you not to be a player, amen? Uh, God made you not to be a pimp, amen? Uh, ladies, you are not to give yourself away out there in the streets, uh, but you are what God says you are. Uh, come on and put your hands together. Give God some praise. Uh, amen, let the devil know I am. Uh, come on, say with me, I am what God says I am. Uh, so God says here, amen, I want you to know who loves you. Uh, and isn't that the real question? Who really loves me? Uh, because the flesh is never satisfied. Uh, and in hell's kitchen, people don't even know what they want. Uh, they may want you one day and kick you to the curb the very next day. Uh, but here, when your heart is broken, uh, here when you feel that you're all by yourself, uh, the Lord said, I hear your cries and I hear your moans. Uh, and God said, I'm going to come down to you like rain that falls out of heaven. I'm going to drop my spirit upon you. And how many of you know today that we serve a God that loves us with unconditional love? What I love about Jesus, you don't have to look so cute for Jesus to love you. Amen. Amen. How many ever had, you won't raise your hands on this. How many ever woke up and had a nappy head day? All right, some of you honest in here. How many ever woke up and said, I want nobody to see me today? When the doorbell rang, you looked at the people, who is it? So let me in. No, not the way I'm looking. Uh -huh. Amen. But let me tell you something. You know, even on a nappy head day, uh, the Lord loves us. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, amen. When you reach in your pocket, you ain't got no money. Uh, God still loves you. Uh, amen. That love when they said, I'm going to stick by your side. Uh, then they got tired of you and kicked you to the curb. Uh, God said, I'm going to love you with an unconditional love. Uh, amen. So we ought to give God some praise today. Uh, when God said, you used to eat out of hell. Uh, but you didn't know what you were eating out there. Uh, amen. You were eating, amen, out of the garbage can. Uh, amen. You were jumping through hoops today because you felt, uh, because you wanted to be loved, you had to do what other people did. Uh, but you ought to thank God today. The Lord said, I love you more than the world. Uh, lift those hands to heaven and tell the Lord, thank you for your love. Uh, God said, I love you more than the world. Uh, I love you more than your so-called close friends. Amen. God said, I love you so much. And he said, if you can gain an appetite uh, of love of me, he said, if you can get my word, uh, come on and taste the word. Taste this, taste a taste of God's word. Uh, the Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, amen. Jesus always satisfies. Uh, I'm happy to know over here that I had some rough days over here. Uh, amen. But when the rough days come, I knew where to go to. Uh, I knew that first lady. Even though, I, even though I love her so much, uh, even though I love my children so much, uh, I knew that when my soul needed to be satisfied, uh, I had to go to the rock. Uh, I had to go back to the loaf of bread that works for me. Amen. Uh, amen. Jesus is sweeter today. Uh, come on, give God some praise today. Uh, this word you hold is the word of God. Uh, this word you hold today is the bread. Uh, not just any type of bread, uh, but this word holds let the devil know, amen. Uh, amen. This is the word that I eat today. Uh, this is the word I digest today. Uh, the world will understand why you reading that word. Uh, this is my bread today. Uh, amen. Do you believe everything in that Bible? Uh, from Genesis to Revelation, I believe every word. Yeah. Every word is good to us, amen. Uh, every word is precious to us. Uh, every word. You ought to praise God. You ain't living in hell's kitchen anymore. Uh, you, ain't eating, you ain't eating from the world anymore. Uh, you ain't eating garbage food anymore. Amen. Uh, I'm not eating, amen, out the garbage can. Uh, Pastor, what do you mean? Uh, some of us ate, amen, resentment. Uh, and we, amen, we ate, amen, a spirit of anger. Uh, and some of us ate up unforgiveness. Uh, and no wonder we were emotionally messed up. Amen. Uh, because you really are what you eat. Uh, and I'm Today, uh, don't you dare digest somebody else's attitude of you. Uh, you are not what they think of you. Uh, you are what God says you are. Uh, so look into the perfect law of liberty uh, and tell yourself, I am an overcomer. Uh, I can do all things through Christ. Uh, the world may not understand why I'm eating this word, uh, but I need this word today in order to make it uh, because I got a real devil I got to contend with. Uh, Inside. And I know any demon that comes in my way. Uh, hold that word up right now. Uh, this word is not just the bread of life, uh, but this word is your sword. Uh, you got to know how to use your sword. Amen. Uh, and like David took the 
sword. You got to know to be a warrior today. You got to know how to cut that devil's head off. Amen. Take the sword of the spirit. Come on, soldier. Grab your sword today. Come on, soldier. Get out of that bed from crying. Come on, soldier. Get out of the tricking us all along the way. Jesus said, I've been trying to show you that. You got to love me so much that if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Come on, somebody. Brother Johnson, help me out here. That's the word. That's God, right? Stay right there. I got to pray more. As I pray more, I'm moving toward the word. I got to fast more, and as I fast more, I'm moving toward the Word. As I worship God, this means I have to audibly let a sound come out of my mouth. Silence is not your enemy. You know, I've been telling you this. When you worship and praise God in your wilderness, flesh should say, I don't feel like praising God. That's the exact time you need to praise Him. I don't see my blessing. That's the exact time you need to lift Him up. I don't need to feel definitely don't need a drink. Don't need no pot. I ain't got to have my girls, my boys around me to feel better. All I need is that word. That's my manna. God said, you draw nigh to me. See, sometimes we're afraid to go to God. But we need to go to him. And look at this. As I'm moving closer to God, and Brother Johnson, you come toward me. I'm going to him, he's coming to me. Amen? And let's see, you know, we meet. Thank you. We meet. 
Today, right now, I'm going to uh, make this altar call. If you're not where you need to be, right where you are, I want you to lift those hands to heaven because God wants, he wants to meet you in worship. Right where you're at. In your heart, which is your mind. Go to God in your mind. Say, Lord, you know what? I thought I had to carry all these weights. I had to, thought I'd carry all these things. And everybody pulled on me. They want this from me. They want that from me. And Moses was frustrated. He said, Lord, these people, they... You, you, they, they, they wanted you to deliver them. Did you deliver them? Now they crying. They got nothing to eat. They crying. They ain't got nothing to drink. The next area of scripture, they got to the waters. They said, these waters are bitter. We can't even drink these waters. Moses, did you bring us out of Egypt to die? Let me tell you something. God didn't bring you over here into holiness. God didn't bring you over here for you to die and to struggle up. God brought you over here that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So what God is saying, I'm trying to bring you to a real relationship with me. And God said, I'm trying to teach you how to get out of your own mind and to get into my mind. I'm trying to show you how to lay aside your cares because look at this. If, if God said, if I don't come by for you, you ain't going to be blessed anyway. So why not trust me in your wilderness? In your wilderness, it looks like God's going to pass you by. But God said, if I got to send somebody that you don't even know to bless you, I could cause your enemies to bless you. So I'm telling you right now here, Jesus always satisfies. And in the midst of our worship right now, as our altar, call, altar workers have come forward, in the midst of our worship, we need him. So we're praying right now if you want to come to this altar and if you want to kneel. If you've not been baptized right now, you can come too because Jesus has already opened the door for you to come. Well, some people say like this, you know what, I want to get this right in my life before I come to the Lord. And you don't understand that's a trick of the adversary. Because if you can get things right in your life, you really wouldn't need to come to God because you, then you'd be your own God. But since you can't fix your own problems, God's saying, put me in front of your problems. Put me in front of your anxiety. Put me in front of your worry. Thank you, Jesus. Put me in front. God said, I'm going to give you exactly what you need. Amen. So we come down for prayer. Don't be, don't be ashamed or afraid to receive prayer right now. We have prayer warriors going to work with you. Feel free to lay hands on these individuals. If you want to be anointed, amen, we'll anoint you right now. Jesus always satisfies. If anything we need that's real today, we need a real God that cares about us in our real situations. We got real tests and trials. Hallelujah. Today the Lord's saying, I, I, I want to meet all of your needs. Because he's an all-sufficient God. Amen. The devil told somebody, just take your life, you might as well give up. But today, those of you may be listening by the way, the internet, if you hear that voice that says, take your life, commit suicide, that ain't nothing but the devil. And the Lord is saying today, you need to rebuke that spirit. And if you're in this city, you need to come down to this church, 703 East Jefferson. You need to come and get your life right with God. God will make it right for you. Do not take your life. Do not blow your brains out. Don't take those pills and commit suicide. Because when you're over, it's not over. That's only the beginning of eternity. But today you need to eat his word. Right now, in the midst of worship, right where you are, with every head bowed and every eye closed, some of us today need emotional healing. We've been roughed up all of our life, and we truly have been in a furnace of affliction. Some of us have been told some things, and we just said, well, I guess that's just the way I am. I guess I'll always be that way. I'll always be broken all my life. And I'm here to declare right now in your life that the Lord says you are healed. Because the Lord is your healer today. I want you to lift your hands as you keep your head bowed. Keep your head bowed. Lift those hands to heaven. Offer up this prayer. And I declare right now, by every lying demon 
has lied to you all your life. I declare right now in the name of the Lord, every shackle to be broken, every feather to be broken, hallelujah. I come against any spirit of suicide. I come against any despondent spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as we lift our hands to you, God, we make an open declaration that you are Lord over us. Rain on us at this altar. Rain on us where we are in our pews, God. Rain on us, God, like you rain on the children of Israel, man from above. Rain on us your grace. Oh, God, we can't make it without you. We're in this service not to play church and not to play with you, God. We know that before we leave this building, God, there's some issues in us that need to be fixed. There's some areas in our life that need to be reconciled, God. So I declare right now, Lord, there's any doubt, if there's any fear, God, of going forward in you. I declare through the power of your word that you have not given everyone in this congregation the spirit of fear. I pray the word right now, but you've given them the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. I declare right now through the blood of Jesus, Lord, you say you have other sheep not of this fold that you must gather. Somebody today has come, Lord, because they, they know they should be in, in church service. But Lord, I declare right now that before they leave these four walls, God, they will go forth knowing that you are the satisfier. All of our needs, you will satisfy. Whether it be emotional, whether it be spiritual, we got some economic blessings, some needs, God. So we come to give you thanks right now as we stand on our feet. We come to declare to you, God, that we thank you that you are God big enough to handle all of our problems and all of our struggles. And you told us, God, to look up and be of good courage. You came that we might have joy. You might have it more abundantly. I pray right now for those that are in the service, somebody today that even yet needs to go down in water baptism, that they would make up their mind in a hurry, that today they can go down believing in your name. They can bury the old man in water baptism. Today they can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Have your way right now, we ask it. We believe it right now by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Brother Sanchez, why don't you play something for me there on the synthesizer. As ministry, you may be seen, ministry is taking place. Please be cognizant of hear what the Holy Ghost is doing. Amen. We have the soul going down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I said, Chaz, why don't you play not looking back, moving ahead. Mm. Today, we want your peace call and an election to be sure with God. And that's just church talk to me that we want you to know that you're really saved today. We want you to know today that the Lord can fix everything in your life. And we're not here to tell you that you're not going to have any more struggles, but you will. But we're here to declare today that we serve a God that loves you so much that he said, I'm going to walk with you. Mm, I'm going to walk in you. And he'll be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen? And today... We want you to know that you need a blood covering today. God wants to wash you in his blood. So through you submitting yourself to water baptism in the name of Jesus, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And through faith in his name, the Lord Jesus will allow his blood to be applied to your soul. God said like a vessel that's cleaned out of all sin, the Lord said I will fill you up with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? So today you have a decision to make. You have a real decision to make. Are you going to see God in the proper dimension? Will you move forward and be different from this day forward? Or will you walk being brainwashed by the devil going back to hell's kitchen? The Lord said, I got a diet for you. I don't want you to feast in hell's kitchen any longer. Stop eating from the pot of low self-esteem. Stop eating from the pot that says I can't do it. 
Stop eating from the pot that says I'll always be this way. It's time for you to move out of low self-esteem. Time to move out of hell's kitchen of doubt and fear. And know today that you can leave the world behind and not feel guilty about being saved. But you can move forward today. These souls, we have some going down in Jesus' name. We have some at the altar. And I'm encouraged by everybody in here to know that Jesus always satisfies. And whatever your need is, some of us got some economic needs. God said, I'm going to provide for you. Because I'm bigger than your company. Amen? I'm bigger than the government. And if he feeds the birds of the air, of course he's going to take care of you. And when you wake up in the morning, be honest with God and say, Lord, I, I could use some more joy right now. God, I could use some more peace right now. Lord, I, I just need a touch from you this morning. So in this ministry, we're going to give you the tools so that, that you can come alongside next to God. And as we pray the word, we want you to know this isn't just a book series. We really believe this. When you pray this word, God is going to change some things amen, in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit. When you pray the word, say with me, I've got to pray the word. Say with your mouth, I've got to pray the word. So therefore, Jesus said the words that I speak unto your spirit and life. What you got to declare right now, I got to tell myself what the word says. The word says you are more than a conqueror. You're not just a conqueror, you're more than a conqueror. The word said, I can do all things through Christ. Amen? The word said, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. Amen? Come on, somebody. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look this way. Pay attention. The word says. You better be a new wineskin. We've only been looking at God in one or two dimensions. God is saying, you need to see me in a different manner. Because the same God that took them out of Egypt, God said, I tried to teach you that I will establish you in your desert, in your wilderness. But your wilderness is not your stopping point. It's just a time of transition. So you're going through sadness. You're going through confusion. Let's say, I'm going through it. And God said, when I take you through it, I'm going to bring you to the land flowing with milk and honey. Because with Jesus, things always get better. Say it with me, with, with Jesus. With Jesus. Things always get better. We serve a great God who is great in the midst of hard circumstances. And as the old song says that Jesus specializes. How many have a regular doctor and then you have a specialist? See, you need a specialist when somebody that really knows about your feet or your lungs or asthma. You just don't need any kind of doctor. You need somebody to specialize in a certain part of your body. And God said, I'm, I'm the greatest specialist you'll ever need. Because Jesus says, I understand you when you don't even understand yourself. And I can work on your brain. I can work on your emotions. I can work on your mood swings. I can work on everything that's about you. But in order for you to get healed, you're going to have to eat my word. Eat that manna. The manna is the word of God. Amen? How many sermons today by hearing this message? You're going to stay out of hell's kitchen. I'm only going to eat what God says eat. And when I eat the word of God, Brother Ed, I'm going to be healthy. Amen. We were lifting them blocks out there, about 10 pounds. Those, I didn't lift any bags. Y'all younger brothers did that. I was 60 pounds. I knew not. I just root you all on. But you know what? I'm going to eat my spiritual food, and you know what? I'll be able to lift the heaviest weight of testing trials and throw it off of me. When you eat the word of God, God's going to allow you to bench press all your testing trials. You'll be able to lift it up, and you'll be able to throw evil spirits off of you. Amen? Don't you dare allow the devil to ride your back. Tell that devil, get off of me, a child of God. It don't matter what people think of you, it just matters what God thinks. Amen? 
don't allow nobody to make you sad or depressed by what they say or what they do. You're a child of God. I'm showing you how to eat now. Amen? I don't like the way you look. Well, you didn't make me. I don't like your hairstyle. I fixed it on my head. I don't like your tie. Look at this. It don't matter. People always got an issue with people. Because flesh is never satisfied. Flesh is never satisfied. The days are getting ready for Sister Preacher going down in Jesus' name. Let's get out of hand first. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you today, and this is what the world needs to know. And I'm not sure if we're still on the air or not, but they, you need to know that Jesus satisfies. Number one, there's a soul in you that's craving for God. So your soul always says yes, but it's your flesh that gives you a problem. Somebody got up in the morning and said, you know what, I'm going to church this morning, but somehow the devil got in the details. They didn't make it here. But you made it here because of the grace of God. And you ate this bird this afternoon, amen? amen. Others are going to eat this word by the way of the internet. When it goes up on YouTube, they'll be able to digest the same word that you ate right now. And I want to encourage everybody to hear, keep on eating the God's word, amen? amen? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I love about the Lord. Just a small portion of oh, Jesus goes a long way. Amen? Amen. 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 You can read two scriptures. That's enough to fill you up. Come on, somebody. Amen. You, can get, you can get you one verse. You can get you one verse. I'm talking about tasting the manna. Mm. Just get you a seed. Get you a word. Get you some manna. And taste of God's goodness. Because your soul is thirsty, I want you to know today, it's imperative that you eat the word and pray the word. Because if you don't eat this word to see, if you don't develop an appetite to want to serve God, and you've got to attend unto God. If you don't attend by making yourself come to service and making yourself fast and pray, do you understand today you will lose your appetite for God? That's why when you witness to some people, they're like, it doesn't phase them. They don't have an appetite for God. But because you learn how to feast on God, the more you eat Him, the more you come to church, the more you pray, the more you want to come to church. Amen? So don't lose your appetite, saints. Don't lose your appetite for God. Your soul salvation is dependent on what you eat today. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. service like this at 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We'll baptize you whenever you're ready. Amen? Amen. These souls are ready right now. Let's give God a hand praise for these ready souls. Let's go. I 